glass woods at set bloom get that silvery look makes them pretty easy to spot yeah he's a little painted turtle I think. Here, hold him So I broke into this hive and uh, I was gonna shake down the top two supers and then I got in here and started seeing evidence that they have requeened or swarmed and I couldn't find any brood or eggs. I went down into the third box. I haven't gone below that. Just don't wanna mess with it. But since they're in a brood break, this is an opportunity for me to take this third box as well. So I'm shaking them down into two I'll put an excluder over that. And then if we get sourwood, uh, this is gonna be a good sourwood yard, I hope. There's a lot of it in that little hollow over there and within a mile there's as much as I know of in this area. So I'm probably, if I've got the ability to harvest these and get drawn comb back on them, I'm gonna try to get drawn comb on these supers, on these, hives out here and uh, see if I can make some sourwood. But otherwise, this will be tulip poplar in that third. They've not been fed sugar syrup this year. So good honey and I need it. Spring flow was not that great. This is a brood pattern from a queen I made this year. My early round of splits. I'd say she's doing okay. So I want to use this hive as a cell builder and I went through it Tuesday. This is Sunday. Went through it Tuesday. Could not find the queen and I've got to find her so I can put her in the top, split it with a double screen board and make the bottom part queenless. So instead of digging and digging and digging, I just put queen excluders between all the boxes that she could be in. And now all I've got to do is go through here and find the box that has eggs. Since it's been five days, there won't be eggs in two of the boxes and there will be in one of them. All right, so I went through 
all three of these boxes i do have young brood in this one i suspect the queen is in here i don't have young brood in that one i have almost no brood in that bottom box so little that uh, is open that i actually found two queen cells down here and i think what happened is since i had a queen excluder here and a queen excluder here they were far enough removed from the queen pheromone that they thought they were queenless and it was pretty obvious when i got into that bottom box they were just ill and um, so, so I went through every frame in both these boxes and didn't find any queen cells in this one, cut the ones out of there. I gave them a frame of foundation. I took three frames away, put a double frame feeder in. I've fed them and gave them a frame of foundation to work on. And now I'm going to put the double screen board on and then put the queen's box on top facing backwards and this will make this bottom part a queenless cell starter and then when after two days after i graft tomorrow i'll go in and and cut any cells down again tomorrow before i stick my graft frame in and then uh, two days later i'll reverse these boxes so this will become a queen right cell finisher it's a Bob Benny, Chris Werner method. It's a mess. I've got bees all around, but uh, it works good. I've used that. I used that same hive there as my uh, cell starter finisher the last time I grafted. I let my kids decorate some of the honey supers before I wax dipped them. That's some pretty stuff there. So I just tasted that. That real light colored honey is clover. It does have some sugar syrup mis mixed in it because this is a, a nuke I've been feeding. But they're definitely working Dutch white clover and getting something from it. Those hives over there are working something dark. And uh, it's good, but it's darker. Quite a lot darker. Interesting. Oh, I've got a queen there. Awesome. First frame. She's mated and laying. Love it. If I had a marking pen in my coat pocket where it's supposed to be, I could go ahead and mark her since I found her. One of my favorite things about these Italian queens is how easy they are to spot. That is just so cool. They're on a, bees are on a little bit of a nectar flow up here. There you go, girl. This hive right here, you can see the inner cover. She overwintered as like two to three medium frames of bees. I didn't know if they were gonna make it or not. I equalized into them a couple times. I uh, swapped positions with a stronger hive to give them more foragers. And now, this is one of my strongest hives. Those late summer queens, I tell you. They are on some sort of a little flow here because they've drawn two or three frames out, started working on them in the last week. I'm curious what this is. Looks like they're gonna draw some drone comb out for me. That is a bonus. I'll be needing that next year. Uh-oh, we've got the queen up here. What do you know about that? You know what we're gonna do with her? We're gonna strip the top three boxes 
and stick her below it and put an excluder on there. That is a happy coincidence. Wish I had a clean clip. Now I'll let her go into the third. There she goes. Go on down, girl. There you go. Now, I set an excluder on there. Put these supers back on and let them, let the brood start aging out of them. Wait a month and there's nothing in them but honey. Man, that was lucky. It's a beautiful day. Bluebird sky. I've been through some hives that are showing a little optimism. They're drawing some wax. Seeing nukes grow. And now I am putting cells into a, or cell cups into a cell bar. And I'm about to raise some baby queen bees. And I just had a surreal moment. I thought, this is my job. <laughs> Smelling the smoke from the wood pellets in my smoker. Beautiful sunny day. This is my job. Love it. Now if I can only make enough money to <laughs> be viable. <laughs> if I can last through the startup phase persevere and get to the point where it's viable and will support me. And I'll be a happy camper. Love it. Man, I love this. All right, so here's my builder. I've got the queen in there. Those are honey supers. And I've got this bottom part queenless and they know it. They've already stung me like five times. I went through every frame. I did find two or three emergency cells in this box here. The bottom box, the brood is too old for them to make any more cells, so there weren't any. Uh, bees are ornery. They don't like being queenless. I went ahead and pulled a pollen frame up. That's there. They've got some brood frames in here. Uh, that's mostly capped brood. I did give them one foundation. They've got a feeder with syrup. And now I'm gonna go into this hive and find a frame of eggs and young larvae and graft out of that. I've grafted out of them before and I like that queen. She's one of the best producing queens I've got this year. She hasn't tried to swarm, uh, just a good producing queen. So I'm gonna graft out of her again. Well, I just finished up grafting and I'd be lying if I said I thought it went well. I'm still getting it figured out. Um, I got a master grafting tool and I thought I was gonna like it. I did pretty good with it the last time, but this time the little tongue got bent out of shape and then I was trying to replace the tongue and boy, it was a mess. I had a lot of trouble getting it in there it kept popping the spring still kept popping out from under the screw head oh goodness i ended up using a chinese tool and i think i prefer the chinese tool um you can't see down in there i also forgot my glasses and i forgot my headlamp so it's just been amateur hour we'll see in a couple of days what the take's gonna look like but i feel like a total amateur uh, the Chinese tool, um, I'm learning that you, you don't need to see getting the larvae. It's actually better if you don't see it. You just use the headlamp in your eyes to find the right larvae and then kind of lean the uh, rest, the tool on the bottom of the cell. And I'm turning the frame upside down. Go in until you can just barely feel it hitting bottom and then pull it back out still resting it on the bottom of the cell if you tip it up too much it wipes the larvae on the cell wall but if you get it just right you can go in there quick and you don't have to see the larvae or anything down in there so maybe i will get better at this 
I need to do it a lot more. That's how you get better. And next year I plan to do that. So building competence. That's what I'd like to be is competent. Maybe not winning competitions at grafting, but at least competent. been two days since I grafted into here and I think they're working at least some of them so maybe I didn't mess it up too bad let's find out one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen At one two Three misses. I'll take that. All right, so now this box was queenless. Mm -hmm. This has got the queen in it. Recombine those, so she's into two. Mm -hmm. And she's obviously got room to lay down here because that brood is aging out. So hopefully that'll relieve any swarming pressure she's got. My grafts are in here. Mm -hmm. It'll stay there for a few more days, and I've got honey supers on top. I put a turtle with me. Oh, it's a box turtle. My daddy found it on the side of the road, trying to cross, and we thought he may get run over, so we brought him here, and we put him in a nest. Want to see him? He's just peeking out from the behind his shell. You're taking good care of her, aren't you? Yep. Well, at least she has a nest. So this is my divided medium mating nuke. You can see my lids, I've got two plugs on there so that I can use two bucket feeders, one for each hash. So each of these is, has had a gallon of feed. Uh, I dropped a cell in almost three weeks ago. I just went through this half and didn't find anything in there. Uh, they're fanning, they're really loud. I found no evidence of a queen, so I think they are on their way to being laying worker. This half over here, I just peel the screen back, and they are drawing wax out on the far frame. This is a new frame as well, and they have almost drawn it out completely. That tells me they are probably going to be queen right, and if they are, then what I'm going to do is mark this queen and then pull this masonite divider in the center of the box out and merge this into a, a big nuke. Now that will keep this half from going laying worker and this half over here will take over with the queen. So I like these boxes pretty well so far. Um, I think it's an efficient use of resources. Less wooden wear, more queens, uh, a lot of things you can do with them. This queen's getting kept brood already. She's doing a really good job. So I'll let her take over both sides of this nuke. So I just put the queen over on this side and then I pulled this divider out of the center. So I've got this queenless nuke on this side that's not laying worker yet, but they're out of brood. And to get to this queen, they've got to cross all these frames of bees that are loyal to her. So by the time they get over there to where they could hurt her, I think they'll be merged. So I've been going through mating nukes and finding queens and marking them. I gotta say, it feels like a cheat day. 
like I'm not really working because I enjoy that so much. It's hot and I'm sweating to death. It's 85 degrees. But uh, man, I love going through these little starter colonies, the babies with their brand new queens. And some of them have just got a sheet or two sheets of brood already. It's just fun. I love seeing the, the little ones get going. So my mating success rate so far looks pretty good. I think, um, let's see, I just checked 24. I checked uh, four more a couple days ago. So that'd be 28, and I think I've had three misses. So what's that gonna be? Something like 85%, somewhere around there, probably. It's not too bad. I can, I can work with that. I can, I can work with that. Hey guys, Nathan Duck River Honey. I think this is number 17 in my vlog series on building a bee business. And, you know, I'm just trying to chronicle and record the struggle, I guess, is what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing sometimes. This week, uh, week started out good. Last Saturday, Memorial Day weekend, we took the kids on a float trip on the Duck River here in our kayaks, and that's a lot of fun. You know, get out and find shells and turtles and all kinds of stuff. So I had a lot of fun there. It also gave me a chance to scout out the basswood flow. And uh, we have a lot of basswood trees along the river corridor, especially on the river bluffs. And uh, we've got quite a few of them setting flower this year. So I saw two basswoods in bloom three years ago. And I have not seen one flower since then anywhere in the county and this year you know i probably saw 50 trees on that two hour float that are setting flower so that's lifted my spirits quite a bit you know i've got hope that we're going to get some more flow i also saw quite a few sourwoods this week that are setting flower now i'm not in an elevation where sourwood will really produce um, i'm about 700 feet and you need to be around 2,000 feet for, for really good sourwood production, but we do get some sourwood here. And uh, it's really good honey, so I'm hopeful that I'll be able to pick something up, you know, in what is left of June uh, versus just being done with honey production for the year. I have seen some hives drawing a little bit of wax this week. Not a lot, but a little bit. Especially the small nukes. Uh, my mating nukes are exploding. I can't believe how much they've grown. I made those mating nukes up in d divided medium nuke boxes and I would put no more than three drawn frames in there. You know, a frame of food, frame of brood, maybe a frame of bees. Um, and some of them I made up with just two frames, a frame of brood and a frame of food. And these are medium frames. So these are pretty small nukes. And that's intentional because it makes it easier to find the queens when I'm going through there. And uh, some of those are drawing their last frame out. So I'm gonna have to split those down to keep them weak uh, when I do my next round of queen grafting. Speaking of grafting, I, I did a graft this week and I didn't think it went well, but apparently it went okay. I think it's more important to get your cell builder set up right. Like that's 80 or 90% of the battle is getting the cell builder set up right. And then your skill in grafting maybe five to 15, 20 percent of the equation um, because I'm not that good at grafting and I think I had three misses out of 45. So that's going to give me another 42 cells. It'll be ready sometime next week. Um, I actually think I was supposed to put them in the incubator the next Tuesday, which is when I'm going to see Corey Stevens. So I'll either have to do it the day before or the day after. So I got a lot of work done in the honey house this week. I got my bottling tank cleaned out. I got most of the trim uh, put up. I've still got a little bit of ceiling trim left. And then I've got to figure out how to pad out the, the rear doors, you know, the bay doors, and uh, get some paneling on those and then close in the end of the building, you know, uh, shim out the end of the, of the walls so that they will hit those doors. Um, that's gonna be, I'm not looking forward to that. I think I'm gonna have to drill holes through the doors and put carriage bolts through 
and um, put some shim blocks on the inside and then um, put some two by fours across those and then nail to those. And then I can rip down some two by fours or whatever I need to do to extend the, the walls and the ceiling to where they will you know, hit, hit that and um, quasi close in the, the building, have everything washable, cleanable. But that project is nearing completion. Uh, I did some cleaning in there this week. I've got just a little bit more trim to do. And uh, I could, if I was in a position to, I could be harvesting honey right now. But um, I've got a round of splits to get ready. And I've got yards to get set up. I've got to expand yards, get more hive stands set up. I'm planning on moving bees tomorrow. Um, so I've got half of my VSH virgins I got from Corey Stevens. Those nukes are at an out yard about seven miles away. And I want those nukes populating my drone flooding yards. So um, what I'm gonna have to do is to bring them back and put four in each yard or, or whatever. I do have another yard of them uh, just over a, a mile to the southwest but I've got to bring the rest of those back and then that will give me some room to take the nukes that I'm about to make and move them to out yards. Uh, I've got a lot going on right now. I need to be pulling honey, but I just don't have the wherewithal to do it right now. I've got, um, I'm prioritizing bees. And the reason that I say I need to be pulling honey is I could be pulling tulip poplar honey from the spring and you know keep that as a varietal get empty comb put it back on hives and that would help me to capitalize on basswood sourwood sumac or dutch white clover which we are getting a little bit of that right now but it's very spotty it's really spotty so i think i'm just going to have to um, keep boxes of foundation on hives and make sure they've got enough space. If we do get some flow, they can you know, fill those up. I don't know that I'm gonna have the ability to churn through supers and get wet supers back on hives. That's something I should be in a position to do by next year, but this year I liken what I'm doing to um, building a life raft while you're in the water. Uh, you know, and I'm just trying to build my infrastructure as I go and I just don't have enough of it built to be able to do some of the things that I would like to do. You know, some of the management things I would really like to do that I know would be beneficial. I just don't have the ability to get everything done in the time that I've got to get it done. I've got 50 telescopic top lids out here in the yard. I painted them and they're drying. Um, I like telescopic lids with inner covers, but they've got to be a very specific way. The inner cover needs a, at least a 7 16 to half inch rim uh, below the, the top lid. And I would prefer to have longer sides on the telescopic covers. And I think if I'm gonna use these in the future, uh, I may just move to migratory lids predominantly, but if I'm gonna use these telescopic lids in the future, I think I'm gonna have inner covers made the way I want them, or I will make them the way that I want them. And then the top lids, I've got an Amish supplier in Etheridge, Tennessee that I get a lot of my woodenware from. I think I could get him to make those top lids and just not put the metal on them. And then I could wax dip them and then put the metal on myself. And uh, that would be pretty efficient. You can't spell painting without pain. And I really, really don't like painting, especially when I've got a wax dip tank sitting over there that uh, I could be running these things through. But I don't want to have a chance of wax pooling underneath the, the metal and um, all that stuff. So I'm just gonna paint these and then move on to something else in the future. So I also started going through mating nukes this week and finding and marking queens and uh, just assessing those. It looks like I'm getting close to 89 or 90% uh, mating success on this latest round. So that's, you know, I can live with that. That's really good. I'm happy with that. I expect that to drop uh, off as we get closer to dearth and the dragonflies and the baby birds start coming out in force. So um, 
you know, now is a good time to get mated queens and it's going to get worse as we get into summer. So I, that's why I'm trying to just keep some going and, um, you know, keep increase, increase, increase um, while I've got the ability to do it. So QA this week comes from Ronald Lauf. Uh, he says he's got two questions for you. What kind and size honey pumps did you end up with? Uh, I didn't end up with any honey pumps yet. I would love to have a honey pump and a, clarif and a clarifying tank uh, for this year's honey extraction, but it, I just don't think it's going to happen. I'm, I'm trying to prioritize building hives, and I've invested a lot of money into woodenware because of that. And I came into, when, I came into spring with 40 colonies, I took that down to 30 or 32, making splits and making increase. So my honey production is not going to be that much more this year than it was last year. Um, and I think I can just kind of struggle through this year doing buckets and, you know, straining straight out of the extractor and, and all that. And then hopefully cash flow investing into a honey pump and a clarifying tank over the winter and have that ready to go for next year because next year i should be coming into spring with over a hundred production colonies and at that point i'll really need you know some of that stuff um, i'll be in drums I'll, I'll need a clarifying tank with an, uh, with a float switch um, all that kind of stuff I, you know I'll, I'll overrun the the bucket brigade at that time now as far as which honey pump i would go with i I'm leaning towards the Daydant uh, one and a half inch gear pump. They've got this set up where it has got um, different size pulleys so you can change the RPM. And if you look at the specs, uh, I've really looked at the Maxant, the uh, Man Lake has got one and Daydant has got one. Then you can also look at some license and, and stuff like that. But the Daydant and Man Lake are both using a Roper one and a half inch gear pump. But the Man Lake does not have the extra pulleys and it has a three quarter horse motor. The Daydant has the pulleys that allow you to change speed and it has a one horsepower motor. And then the Max Ant is like a third horsepower motor and you can't change speed on it. And it's not that much cheaper than the other two. So in my mind, get the big motor, get the, the ability to change the speeds, which you can slow it down to pump colder honey is the, you know, the point of that. Uh, you can change the speed for different applications, uh, different viscosities of honey. So I think I'm, I'm probably going to settle on that and I'll have to look at shipping and stuff to figure out where I'm going to get a clarifying tank from. Cause if you're getting a pump, it's got to go less than freight, uh, less than load freight then it may make sense to go ahead and get the data clarifying tank as well. Um, we'll see, you know, I may find something I like better uh, on the used market <laughs> between now and then, that would be nice. Um, but uh, that's what I'm thinking at this point. The second part of Ronald's question is, are you tracking the upcoming El Nino weather pattern that is building and what will be for you? They are predicting a hot, dry summer in New York. I am not tracking it. I have no idea what is going on with El Nino. Uh, I did look at it just a little bit, and I don't know what it's going to mean for us. I, if anybody's out, if anybody is out there and knows more about weather patterns than I do, then uh, chime in. I'll pin the comment. I appreciate it. So in channel news, uh, the best beekeeping joke competition is still going. Uh, I'll leave a link to that video up here in the corner. Also in the description, you guys jump in and enter. I'm going to be giving away some prizes for that. And the comments are, <laughs> the comments on that are worth reading. It's pretty, it's pretty funny. Every time I get a notification of another email or, you know, a ding that I've had a comment on that video, it's, it, uh, it makes me smile through the day. So I'm having a lot of fun with that. Also next Tuesday, I'm headed up to Corey Stevens. I'm going to document the um, unhealthy brood odor 
that Kara Wagner is developing and testing. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to see how that correlates to the Harbo assays that I documented the last time that I was there. Uh, this UBO is a spray that you spray on a brood frame and then you put it back in the hive, put the frame back in the hive, come back two hours later and you can measure hygienic response, uh, which would be a much easier way to measure hygiene, hygiene in bees than doing a Harbo assay. It also would test hives that are treated. So if you're artificially lowering the mite population in a, in a colony, you could test it with UBO. And since it is directly testing uh, the behavior of the bees, it's not testing the reproductive mites in the bees. You can test with UBO, theoretically, you can test with U UBO in the presence of mites or with no mites. So that is going to be interesting. I don't know how that's going to come out. I'm hoping the video does, you know, I hope I can do it justice. It, um, it's kind of hard to, I am not a videographer. We'll put it that way. So I'm going to do the best I can there. If you guys have got any questions or things you want me to cover on that video, then ask them below and I'll take a list with me and, and make sure and bring those things up. So as always, guys, I need questions for QA. You can leave those below. You can email info at Duck River Honey. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you on the next one.